Hey there, it's John with Excel Campus, and in this video, we're going to look at how to analyze bank statements with pivot tables. And specifically, when bank statements contain these debit and credit columns, like you see here, we're going to look at how to create a total of the debits and credits and how to create a summary report of that total with a pivot table. So let's dive into it. And again, we have this bank statement here that's exported from a system or a bank. And here we have a debit uh, column that contains the expenses. If this is for a credit card or a checking account, it'd be the expenses. And the credits would be any refunds back uh, or deposits back to the bank account. So what we're going to do first is convert this to an Excel table or insert an Excel table before we create the pivot table. In order to do that, we'll just select any cell in the range there, go to the Home tab on the ribbon, and then Format as Table. You can just choose one of these uh, styles here. Go ahead and hit OK, and that will insert our table. And I have a separate post that explains five reasons to use tables as a source of an Excel uh, of a pivot table. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. The main reason being that we can quickly add columns and rows to our source range and not have to update the source data range of the pivot table. So now that we have our table, we're going to go ahead and summarize this with a pivot table. Just click this button here and we'll put that on a new worksheet. And at this point, we can first just quickly build out a pivot table that's a summary report of our data. So for that, we can take the category field here. We'll put it in the rows area. That'll give us a list of all of our categories here from the category column. We can then take the debits and add that to the values area. That'll give us a sum of the debit amounts for each category. And we can also take the credits here and put that in the values area as well. And that'll again give us a sum of credits uh, for each category in this case. Now, one question that often comes up is how do I add the debits and credits together to get a total here? I want the total, not just the debits and credits by themselves. And there's a few ways to do that. In this video, we're going to look at two different ways to do that. The first is using a calculated field. So with any cell selected here in the pivot table, we're going to go to the pivot table analyze or options tab. And from this fields, items and sets dropdown, we're going to choose calculated field. That'll open up this window, which allows us to create a calculated field, which is essentially a field with a formula to do that math. So for the name, we can call this total, uh, total of debits and credits, anything you want you can put here. The formula, we're going to delete this zero, and we're going to first double click the debit field. So that'll add a reference to the debit field right here. I'll then type a plus, and then we'll double click uh, the credit field there. So that'll add the credit field as well. You'll notice some extra spaces here. You can uh, keep those spaces or delete them. It doesn't matter. Uh, so once you have your formula, we'll go ahead and hit add. That'll add that to the fields list there. We'll hit OK. And now we can see that we have the sum of total column added to our pivot table. It's also added as a field over here in the fields list, the total here. So we can um, remove it from the values area or add it back at any time. It's also been added down here to the values area. So we have the sum of total here. And again, this is going to give us the sum of the debits and credits. And of course, this is great because it essentially gives us the total expense or the total spending here for each category. And of course, the nice thing about a pivot table along with a calculated field is the flexibility. So if we didn't want to see the, uh, the category over here in the rows area, we could, of course, remove that. Now we're just going to see the total sum of debits and credits for the entire data set along with the total. We might want to see this by date instead. So we could put date in the rows area. Now we have the dates uh, grouped by months here in the rows area. We can expand that out if needed. But this just gives us a different view and a different summary report very quickly. And the calculated field still works across these different filter contexts or these different layouts or views with our pivot table. And one other thing I should point out here is if we go back to the data set, in this case here, my credit column contains negative numbers. Again, those are the refunds or the deposits back to this, the account, and these are negative numbers. If that's not the case for you, if they're positive numbers or maybe even the numbers are reversed here, the debits are negative, the credits are positive, something like that, you'll just simply reverse the math on the calculated field. So instead of a plus, we'll jump back over here to the pivot table, go to the Analyzer Options tab, uh, Fields, Item Sets, Calculated Field, here we can choose from the dropdown our total field and we can see the formula. And this is where we can modify it. So if it's not a plus for you and your credits are a positive number, 
then you might need to make this a minus instead. So you can just make this a minus, you click the modify button and that will save the changes. In this case, I'm not gonna make that change, so I'll just uh, escape out of this. Now, the other way we can solve this is with a calculated column. And we'll add that back to the source data range. So we'll go over here to our original table here. We'll jump up to the top. And here we're going to add a column with a formula. So here we can do the same thing. We call this total, or I'm just gonna call it amount. There we go, and hit enter. And here we'll do the same math. So we're just gonna type a formula equals. We'll select this cell here, D2. And then in this case, I'm going to do a plus and select this cell here, E2. Now, even though that's blank, it's just gonna add those two numbers together and give us the result, which is the total amount. So we'll see that we have one column now with both the credit and debit number. That gives us the total amount. So here we have our negative number and of course our positive numbers where we have uh, debits. So now that we have this amount column, we can add this to the fields in the pivot table. So we'll jump back over to the pivot table and again, since I'm using an Excel table here, that new column's automatically included in the pivot table. All I need to do is right click refresh, our keyboard shortcut is Alt F5 to refresh the pivot table. And then we'll see that new amount field or column over here in the fields list. And of course we can add this to the values area as well. So before I do that, I'm gonna remove the sum of total field here just so it's not confusing and I'll enter, or I'll move the amount uh, field over to the values area. And so this is going to give us the exact same result. The reason I removed the total field is that we do not need that calculated column. This is an alternative solution using the, cal I'm sorry, we don't need that calculated field. This is an alternative solution using the calculated uh, column that we have here for sum of amount. And again, this uh, has the same flexibility. So if we want to remove these date fields from the pivot table, the rows area, and add the category field instead, again, we're going to see that we get the same result here. So the advantage here of the calculated column is that we can see this number here and tie it out over here in our table. So you might prefer this. If you're doing some filtering here on your data range and maybe or on your data set here, and maybe you just wanna to filter to tie out some numbers. And of course, then you can see that here in the amount column, you can add that up or one quick tip here on the table design tab is to turn the total row on, and then you'll see the total right down here for the filtered range. So if you're tying out numbers to either your pivot table or some other summary report or even a, another report or file altogether, this is a great way to do it with this amount column because we can quickly tie out and check our numbers here. Maybe you wanna go and exclude some items here, some vendors or something like that. Uh, you can obviously do that as well with the filters. So I do like the calculated column technique uh, for those reasons, but if you don't need to see that or tie out numbers, then the calculated field technique is a great uh, solution because it's, it's very simple, easy way to add a new field to the pivot table. And then one other quick thing I almost forgot to mention is that you do not need these debit and credit fields in the pivot table, uh, regardless of which technique you're using. So we can remove the sum of uh, debit and sum of credit fields out of here and we'll just still have the sum of amount. Of course, with the calculated column, this will work, but it also works with the calculated field as well. So we can just add the total in here. That will again show us our total, and we don't need to display the credits and debits in the pivot table. So I hope this video helps you analyze bank statements and create quick summary reports with pivot tables. Of course, if you have any additional questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment right below this video. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons below as well. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.